All right, you lot, it's Saturday, it is 1.30 o'clock, and today on the underpainting, I thought we would delve into what I think is one of the most divisive topics in the art community. Is it wrong to use references for your work? So for those of you who have been with me for a while, you might recognise this style of video. I decided to rename my series Drawing All The Time, which, to be honest, was never really going to be a permanent name for it. Um, to something a bit more fitting. So I mulled over it for a while, had a good back and forth with my patrons, thanks guys, and I finally settled on the name The Underpainting, a chatty drawing series where we make art together, fit art into our daily lives in order to create as much as possible, uh, try to tackle some of the unseen obstacles that we come against along the way, just drawing and experimenting and learning one layer at a time. At the moment, I'm working on the final drawings in my Mexico travel journal, one of our last days in Mexico City, where we visited the Centro Historico to visit some of the iconic sites, the main square, the cathedral, and the Palace of Fine Arts. I'm gonna be using my Faber-Castell pen in fine, because this is the finest point that I have left working in this set of pens, and uh, I will be coloring the page with my W.O. Smith's watercolors that I've dried into half pans in my portable painter palette. So grab a cup of tea or a Capri Sun, uh, grab your sketchbook or whatever else you're working on and let's talk about references. So here's something you might not know. I don't know if you've seen the painting After the Bath by Edgar Degas. It's a woman with her back to us reclining on a chair, stretching to dry her back. Or Two Tahitian Women by Paul Gauguin. Or Paolo on a Donkey by Picasso. A painting of a little kid in a matching hat and outfit just sitting on a donkey. I mean, big names in the history of art and iconic pieces of work in their own right. Work that was drawn and painted not from imagination or even live subjects, but from photos. Yeah, <laughs> all those artists and countless others use photos as reference for their work. Pretty much since upgrades in the developing process in the late 1800s made taking photos accessible to the masses, it actually became quite a commonly done thing among artists to use photography as a step in their painting process. And you know what, even before all that, there are theories of artists like Vermeer using a tool called the Camera Obscura, which is an invention that would project whatever you're looking at, like a far off sweeping landscape, um, take in all the light and project it onto a wall or the paper in front of you, potentially to be traced, maybe to capture difficult perspectives or complicated composition. I read that even Leonardo da Vinci commented on its potential use for artists. So we've got artists, famous world-renowned artists, using image capturing tools to help them capture the image in their heads on paper. Which is funny when you think about it, because I get so many comments from people who feel awful about using references in their artwork. They think it means they're less of an artist, it invalidates the worth of their work, they're using references as a crutch to make up for what their creative ability lacks. They feel like cheats and frauds and they can't see a way out of it because when they stop using references, they're lost. They don't just know how to draw that thing, that person in that particular position. It's not something that they can just conjure up in their minds. And if they can, somewhere along the way, getting it from their imagination onto paper. Something gets lost in translation. And in the end, even the original idea gets jumbled in their minds. And I can understand that turmoil, that like, torn and guilty feeling. Because on the flip side, you've got the people that argue that, yeah, using references is cheating because it's copying, essentially, and copying isn't creating. And that isn't art. So what does that say about Frida Kahlo's painting, My Grandparents, My Parents and I? And what we think about that, should we be taking down uh, The Bather by Cezanne from the walls of the MoMA? By the way, we haven't even covered this yet. What even is a reference anyway? Uh, I mean, I Google searched it and came up with reference, the use of a source information to ascertain something. So basically, something you use to figure something else out. How does that apply in an art sense? 
Well, I was thinking maybe you could say a picture used to gather information or a picture used to confirm ideas. I like that. What a reference is not is a picture that you copy to create a piece of art. The point I'm trying to make is there's really nothing wrong with using references if you're doing it right. The best thing you can do if you want to use photo references for your art is take the photos yourself. You want to give yourself as much artistic control as you can, dictate the lighting, the framing, the position of your subject, the composition. It's really hard to resist the temptation to just Google image search, but do yourself a favour, don't be lazy, retain as much originality and authenticity in your work as you can. Now obviously taking your own photos isn't always possible, what if you want to draw a Pacific Viper fish? You might be able to find models in museums and if you can I would really recommend that. Remember that the closest you can get to the real thing the better, but if not, yeah fair enough, the next step is going to be to find your pictures online. So study your subject from various photos, not just one. Look at different positions, different angles. Watch a documentary on Pacific anglerfish and draw them in motion. Get a book on the anatomy of deep sea creatures and look at its skeleton, its structure and anatomy. See how it all connects to make it make sense in a way that transforms it from a flat idea to a living, breathing, dynamic thing. Think about how many times you've drawn a face. You probably even know quite well what the skull looks like underneath. So to draw someone at a three quarter angle with their mouth open and one eye open or closed, you kind of start out with an idea of how to do that because you've drawn faces and you've studied faces and you know what's going on under the surface. Build the same knowledge of the viper. Put in the work to learn your subject. It sounds like a lot, I know, and I'm, I'm going to keep saying this because this is one of my biggest weaknesses, but don't be lazy. Art is work, and if you're not working, then you just might be cheating. Another thing to say about your studies from photos, um, I would keep those private. We'll talk more about copyright in a bit, but remember that you are essentially copying someone else's work. Even if it's a photo, even if it's on the internet, it doesn't mean that it's public domain. Um, even if it's in a reference book, it's still the property of the photographer or the publisher. Remember that the photographer framed the shot, they positioned the subject. Um, photography in itself is obviously an art and they, the photographer, had a vision to parade your studies of their vision, masquerading it as something that's your own. Yeah, it's legally wrong, um, but it should also just be something as a creator that morally you're wary of. Okay, so you've drawn from photos, you've used your references. With the knowledge that you've gained from that, create your piece of art using as little help as possible. Use information that you've picked up from multiple images, not just one and be selective about the things you include in the piece, the things that you don't. Remember that you're trying to create an entirely new piece, not a copy of a photo. Um, your work will never be as accurate as a photo or as interesting or engaging unless it brings something new and unique to the table. Someone I think might be worth mentioning quickly is Norman Rockwell. Um, I'll have links and information and pictures on everything that I've mentioned in the description of this video. But he's quite well known for how he created these paintings based on photos that he'd staged himself. He'd have an idea or be given an idea by a client. He'd set up a set, get models and wardrobe, assemble this whole image of what he wanted down to the lighting and accessories and then have a professional photograph it. Craft it, like putting together a painting and then paint from the photo. And even then, even though he'd assembled the whole thing to his liking, he'd make tweaks in the painting process to convey a certain thing that he wanted to convey in the artwork, add character with exaggeration, 
warp the hues, add and just add and take away to dictate his own message and his own unique perspective through the piece. When you've got referencing right, it can be one of the most invaluable tools at your disposal. It opens up a whole world of opportunities when it comes to the subject matter that you show in your work. You can draw scenes from around the world without leaving your house. You also have control over things like pressing pause on the changing light of day to capture certain light, um, zooming in on intricate details or zooming out to perspectives that the eye can't normally see. Those are the pros, but I think it's important to talk about the cons as well. To start, there's always the risk of getting lost in the minute details of a painting rather than seeing it as a whole or seeing it for the message you want to get across. On the technical side of things, you're limited to the references that you can find and what you can do with them legally. And I think the biggest setback is the risk of settling or compromising your artistic vision and putting your creativity on the shelf, making do with the pictures that you can find and barely adding your own flair or uniqueness. And it's quite easy to get referencing wrong. The main way of getting it wrong is to not use the method of getting it right and to just find one image somewhere on the internet and draw directly from that. Not only is it a less valuable painting experience, no vision and no creativity, no innovation and no lessons learned. It's actually something you can get in a lot of trouble for. Even if you're only using an element of a certain picture and heavily stylizing it. Take for example Andy Warhol, and I'm not trying to in any way invalidate the worth of his work. I mean it's all subjective after all, but he actually got himself in a lot of trouble for his screen printings of famous faces. Getting sued by photographers for unauthorised use of their work. Um, I read about one case where he offered the photographer, uh, her name was Patricia Caulfield, he offered her copies of the work that he'd created using her photo without permission. She declined, I think I would too, and she took him to court. And lawsuits are expensive, and we're not all on Andy Warhol level incomes. So eventually he started asking for permission, um, and he actually started taking his own pictures, which I think that probably actually played a part in how he got so into photography. The same kind of thing happened with that Obama poster that went around during his initial campaign, that um, three-colour one with the bold letters underneath saying hope or change. As that poster gained popularity, the freelance photographer who had taken the initial photo that was used for reference, he surfaced and a legal battle began. If you're interested in that kind of thing, it's actually a really interesting case to read up on. The long and short of copyright is that it's just safer to assume that everything is copyrighted unless it explicitly says otherwise. Something being on the internet doesn't make it free to use. It will almost always be the property of the creator. It doesn't matter how common the photo is, if it's of a famous figure or landmark. Think of it this way. You can take a picture of a red telephone box in London while someone next to you takes a picture of it too. You'd end up with almost the exact same picture and I'm sure there are tons online of the very same thing, but theirs will be their copyright. And if you copied from theirs, that's infringement. It's that serious. It's scary stuff when you think about it, because I know I've misused references in the past and misunderstood the laws surrounding them. That's why the best thing you can do is create something unique, either your own photo or your own mental image supported by photographic details. Just for some peace of mind, I'll also leave some links below for some public domain resources where you can find copyright free images to use without a worry. Obviously I had to do a bit of research before coming to you with this topic because it is a tough one and like I said it can split opinions but I'm grateful for the time that I spent looking into this because it's something that's so relevant to me. Using references is something that I have almost always done but only recently started seeing it as a problem because I am fully dependent on them. When I get an idea for a drawing, the first thing I will do, rather than grabbing my pen and paper, is to open up my web browser and start searching for relevant images. And even in that matter of minutes, the more information I consume from the internet, the more different pictures I see, different impressions, the more my initial idea and the original image in my head starts to fade and 
be replaced with outside influences. And I know I can draw from references pretty well, even stylized from photos pretty well. And my fear is drawing badly, starting from nothing and doing something that I don't know about and getting it wrong because you have to get it wrong. There's no way to get it right right away, having to work on it. But that's the fear I want to get away from. And if any of you guys can relate, it's something that I think we should work on together. This month I've made it my aim to draw more without reference and to do that I have a few basic action steps. I'm going to come up with new concepts and ideas for interesting finished pieces and instead of turning straight to the internet to help me develop my ideas, the first thing I'll do is jot down a few thumbnail sketches to get the idea down on paper uh, in its rawest and most original form and the thumbnail will be messy and scruffy and it won't make much sense and it might not even look like the thing I want to draw because I might not know how to draw the thing that I want to draw but I'll have my idea down and it will be my idea unique and uninfluenced by other people and thumbnail sketches are small and they don't need time or commitment so you don't have to feel bad about how they look only once it's already down on paper will I start looking for reference material and I will do it right. I will see if I can create my own or go out and find it before I turn to the internet. The internet is my last option. I'll do my research and develop my idea. I'll do various studies. And then working from the original thumbnails and the lessons I've learned, I'll create my piece of work. And that should be my method from now on. I'll let you know in a month's time how I go on and I would love for you to try something similar. In the meantime, I don't want you to feel disheartened by your use of photo reference. It's okay if you're doing it legally, in moderation, and for personal or education purposes. And just remember, if cheating your way to better art was as simple as copying from a photo really well, wouldn't we all be painting like Delacroix? Thanks to all of you for watching. Without you, this show, the time, the equipment would all be non-existent and a special, special thanks to my patrons whose support makes all the difference. If you would like to support me on Patreon, I will have that linked below. There you can see high resolution images of each and every page in my sketchbook as it happens. There are also weekly real-time videos of a sketchbook spread being put together. Uh, you can also see the full process of this spread being put together where I'll talk more about the drawing and painting process. Um, stay up to date with what I'm doing and what I'm working on and get the occasional bonus video thrown in there as well. It's patreon.com forward slash semi skimmed min. I would love to have you over there, but for now this underpainting is over. I'll see you soon for the next one. Bye.